meet Libra Moon. Libra Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now we are going to scoot through your planets. We're going to do a Saturn check-in and then I've got something special lined up for you that I think you're going to enjoy. So Sun Mercury is conjunct in the 11th house. Let me just make sure I'm recording. Yes, I am. Uh, Sun and Mercury is conjunct in the 11th house. Around September 18, they both step into the 12th house. So what does this mean for you? Um, this is looking to be mm, it's a bit of a mixed bag but it's kind of it is all it does all have a bit of a similar theme uh sun actually well no this they're both similar they are both similar sun and mercury and i mean they are together so they're conjunct um okay let's have let's break it down sun unexpected gains appreciation from your boss promotion this is a time where your income could go up, and that's up until September 18. Let's take a look at Mercury again. Uh, your income could go up. Great time with siblings. Great boost to your willpower. Uh, possibly a hidden talent you'll discover. So that's all looking really nice up until September 18. Uh, but then perhaps we've got some slight issues creeping in. Uh, you want to be careful with your finances for sure. Um, expenses could go higher. And there could be things like sleeplessness, stress, um, things impacting your health, that sort of thing. And with Mercury there, your relationship with your spouse, you might just want to go easy um, on, on your spouse there and take time out, get a bit of space if you have to. Um, mind you, having said that, if Venus is well placed for you and you respond really well to Venus energy, this could be really good. And especially for your partnership, it could be really good. Um, Venus all month is in your first house. This is fantastic. Yep, Venus is gonna retrograde uh, in your first house. She's there until mid-November. So this is fantastic. This is really, really, really good. So Venus is gonna provide stability to your wealth. Uh, I'm hoping in such a way that overpowers what the sun is doing um, and even Mercury. Let's wish that your Venus energy is really powerful for you. Um, so stability for your wealth, but above all else, happiness and success. Great time to meet new people. If you're single, get out and mingle. Uh, Venus is providing really nice energy to you. And I'm really glad about that because she's going to be in that position for a long time mid-november that's quite a transit so look at you libra moon now saturn is in your third house till january 2020 third house hello this is one of the best placements so we haven't done a saturn check-in for a while and i'm sure i would have covered these things in previous recordings but um I mean, it's worth going over this one again because it's so wonderful. This is a great transit. You know, you've come out of Sati Sati and Saturn really wants to reward you, right? So your confidence should be making a comeback. Um, there should be new job opportunities, uh, meeting new people, networking, all that kind of thing. Property matters can be resolved easily at this time. You may buy property. Uh, you may start a business really make the most of this time. I always call this a platform building time. Saturn gives us three platform building opportunities in his very long 29, 29.7 something year cycle. Have I got that right? I should probably check that before I quote it. But um, this is one of the really good spots. So good on you. Now, for every single sign I have been drawing a card from Caroline Mace's uh, archetype card deck and I don't use these in readings uh, you know when you hire me for a session I only use the sidereal Vedic system but um, just for a bit of fun you know I thought why don't we look at one of these decks I have many decks because I just quite like them I think they're a bit of fun it's kind of like you know letting your inner child play so I drew a card on behalf of Jupiter so instead of doing a little roundup of Jupiter I thought I'll just draw a card and, you know, I'll tune into Libra Moon, see what Jupiter has to say. And we got, well, we got quite possibly the best card in the entire deck, guys. 
you got the lover. How amazing is that? Can you see? I hope you can see. I'm never very good at I don't I don't flip the camera thing up. I don't I, I can't see if you can see. But this is the best card to get. So what message is here for you? I mean with Venus where she is, why not? It makes perfect sense. This is the first time I've done this, by the way. This is the first time I've drawn a card per sign. And it's just been amazing how every single card is so perfect for each sign. It's just bizarre. Okay. Oh my God, and you're Libra. Do you know what I mean? I mean, this is just mad. Okay, lover. May manifest in anyone who exhibits great passion and devotion to another, but also to art, music, gardening, nature, or needlepoint. Yes, I fully agree with that. Uh, includes unbridled affection for and appreciation of someone or something that influences the organization of your life and environment. How amazing. Shadow lover manifests as an exaggerated or obsessive passion that has a destructive effect on your physical or mental health and self-esteem. Wow. Do you know, I have been studying... I've been doing an astrological case study on Marlon Brando and let me tell you there's some shadow lover action going on there but that I'm saving for another video I, I'm probably going to record that one of these days um, ask if passionate enthusiasm and or romantic love plays a dominant role in the overall design of your life and self-worth absolutely this is something to meditate on you know the role that romantic love plays in your life and self-worth. How amazing. I mean, look, with Saturn here doing its thing and Venus, what's not to love? You know, you can easily ride through any Saturn Mercury things. But look, I mean, if, if there is something that's not going right for you, um, you, know, you can definitely get in touch and, and see... Uh, see where that might be so there are all kinds of placements doing all kinds of things Libra Moon it has been a delight and we are now going to welcome Scorpio Moon so Scorpio Moon welcome thank you so much for joining now what we're going to do Scorpio Moon is we're going to take a look at your faster moving planets we're going to do a Saturn check-in we haven't seen Saturn for a little while and then Jupiter I've got something really special. So, Sun Mercury is conjunct and it's going to be in the 10th house up until September 18. And they're both going to move into the 11th house together. So, at about September 18, it might be, you know, a couple of days here and there. It's because I wanted to look at them both together. That's why I'm just picking, it's not precise, but it's around that time. Um, let's have a look at this. How is this working out for you? Auspicious time. Yeah, this is... Oh, my goodness. You're on a winner here. This is fantastic. Oh, lucky you, lucky you. This is great. So your, your uh, fast-moving planets are giving you good time. Saturn's not giving you great time. Let's go for the faster moving because this is great. I mean, sun, auspicious time. You know, you'll earn profits with little effort. It's indicated here good health uh, good time with your family and it continues after September 18 unexpected gains appreciation from boss promotion income improvements to income you know I mean this is great uh, mercury income boost up until September 18 career growth great time with your family great time with your spouse then September 18 you've got a boost to willpower you've got income boost still good time with siblings you might even find a hidden talent so beautiful beautiful sun mercury conjunction one of the best actually of, of all i've just gone through a whole bunch of them and you, you've got a really nice one you're on a winner here coupled with venus i mean venus is beautiful all month in the 12th house uh due to the retrograde she's going to be there till mid-november so that's wonderful you're going to have a nice long good venus transit can you imagine if when Venus is stuck in a not so good house and she's retrograding in there? That's that's not a happy time. You've got a good time with all this. So great for romance. Great if you're in a couple. Uh, but great if you're single and you want to meet someone. You might indulge in material things. Why not? 
and uh, you might want to spend money on trips, foreign travel, going somewhere, escaping somewhere, a little getaway, a beautiful little getaway where Bali. How about that? That's where I want to go. I'd love to go there. Now, I do see that we've got Saturn in your second house and that's till 2020. That's the last phase of your Sati Sati. And yes, that can be tough. And yes, that can kind of overshadow everything potentially, but it doesn't have to. I know some people personally who are going through um, Sati Sati and yes, they're having their challenges here and there, but because they've got some of this lovely energy, I know someone with this placement and they're having a good time. Um, it is possible to have a really good time, even despite the fact that Saturn is, is being a bit tough. Let's not forget that Saturn's slow moving, right? So when Saturn's so slow moving and things can be a bit Groundhog Day, you really can take advantage of some of the faster moving planets, some of the fresh energy that's coming out of those. So my advice there is hang in there. Um, yes, you're going to have to work harder. Yes, you're going to have to be, you know, extra patient in your relationship. Um, but think of it as gym training for your soul. I'm sure you've heard me say this before. I probably would have said this a couple of readings ago. Um, you know, you're definitely getting a lot stronger. Now, if we have a look at Jupiter, instead of doing a Jupiter overview, I decided to pick an archetype card for you today. Now, I do not use these cards in my readings. Uh, when you hire me professionally, I never use these. But I thought, it would be fun just, just to shake this up a little, just to do something different and have a bit of fun. So what did Jupiter want to say to you? Oh, the athlete card. Yes, and I remember when I drew this and I thought, oh, athlete, and I've got these notes about how you're like in the gym getting stronger thanks to Sadi Sati, you know, he's giving you a strong soul. How amazing is that? So you got the athlete card. That is so cool. I think that's really cool. I am like the most unathletic person out there. <laughs> but I do my yoga every day. I do 10 minutes of yoga every day. Some days I don't do it, but most, like once or twice a month, I might not do it, but I do it just about every day. Uh, athlete. Okay, athlete. The ultimate expression of strength of spirit represented by the power of the body. How amazing. Has a strong code of ethics and morality. Professional skill level less important than willpower and strength of spirit. Shadow athlete manifests as a misuse of strength. False sense of invulnerability. Ooh, there's a double negative if ever there was one. False sense of invulnerability. You've got to give that one some thought, don't you? Dirty play, okay? Or lack of honor that compels one to cheat. Yes, gosh, I'm thinking of a uh, certain cyclist, Lance Armstrong, comes to mind. Poor guy. I mean, you know, you've got you to gotta have compassion. Why, why did he have the need to... I must admit, I don't really know much about that story, but, I mean, it's interesting, isn't it, you know? And I, I think when we get a card like this, you know, it gives us a chance to reflect on all these dynamics within ourselves, you know, Um and it's athlete is not just a physical thing. I, I do think this kind of links in with, with Saturn here. And you're in your Sadi Sati and it's like that last push and it's like hang in there, just keep going and you are going to come out a winner. You know, and this thing that I say about think of it as gym training, you're getting strong. I mean, how perfect is that with this? Um, look for a lifetime dedication to excellence in sport accompanied by strength of spirit. Yeah, and it could just be working out your soul. It could just be working out your spirit. I drew these earlier, by the way, guys. I thought about drawing them live on the video, but then I thought that was a bit cheesy. <laughs> I love when others do it, but uh, I don't know. I, I kind of felt a bit... Well, it's also time-consuming. I have to fly through these, which reminds me, Scorpio Moon, I have to fly to the next one. So it has been great chatting with you, Scorpio Moon, but I am going to have to press on because the video... My camera keeps dying and I have to get through all of these uh, within a short space of time. Sagittarius Moon, welcome. Welcome Sagittarius Moon, it is so good to see you. Okay, we are going to fly through your planets and then uh, I've got something really special. We're going to do a Saturn check-in and then I've got something very special for you from Jupiter. 
Okay, let's go. Sun Mercury conjunction in your ninth house. It's going to move into the tenth house. So September 18, they're both going to move together and they both head into the tenth house there, which is why I'm reading them together this time. Uh, if we have a look at this, it's kind of looking good. It's looking quite good. Oh, your Venus is stunning. Uh, Saturn, yeah, we, we need to talk about Saturn. Okay, Sun. Let's break this down. Uh, Sun, you will want to be careful at work up until September 18. Your spending might be up as well up to the September 18 point. Again, with Mercury, your finances are tight, likely, until then. You might even have some issues with your dad uh, or your spouse, right? So up until September 18, you know, patience and, and just being careful with finances is important. After September 18, fantastic. Things are looking great. So this is an auspicious time with the sun's placement there in the 10th. Um, you'll make profit from little effort. Gosh, that sounds good to me. Uh, good health, good time with family. That's lovely. Loving all that. Now let's take a look at Mercury. Mercury, income growth, career growth. Great time with family, great time with your spouse. Beautiful. That's looking really, really good. Venus, all month in the 11th house. My goodness, I am so happy for you, Sagittarius moon. This is so good because Venus is going to stay in the 11th house till mid-November. This is a long time um, and this is a great place. Some, some people are unlucky. You know, they got Venus in a bad spot and she's staying there forever because Venus normally moves really quickly. But now we've got Venus retrograding until mid-November so Venus is going to be in the same house so sorry about that there's some amazing noise outside on the street it just gave me a little fright as well okay Venus expansion wealth friends time with friends social time to socialize uh, friends will support you great for you know time with your family great for time with your partner this is beautiful I'm so happy for you and look you truly deserve all of this because you probably are going through uh, a bit of a tough time with Saturn in the first house first house from your moon so Saturn on the moon ouch sadi sati you know and Saturn's going to be in the first house till 2020 uh Jan 2020 Okay, so there could be challenges. I, I know someone who's actually got this exact placement and she is having a good time, believe me. Um, she doesn't have to see, have any problems at all, it seems. You know, she's traveling. She's making a, a really fantastic use of the fast-moving planets. Saturn, though, is in Sade Sati. And, yes, I know this person is going through tough times as well. It's a mixed bag. I mean... It's not the whole entire Sadi Sati that is horrible. Uh, it, it's bits of it that, that can be really tight and difficult. Um, but what I want to say to you is I want to say hang in there. I want to say that, okay, you might have to work harder in your career. You might have to work harder on your relationships. You might need to look after your health just that little bit more. You, you probably need to rest when you need to rest. Like really do take it easy. Uh, I've got a note here. Think of it as your training at the gym. I've probably you've probably heard me say this one. I probably said it a couple of months ago. But you are getting stronger. You're getting that soul stamina, that soul strength. You know, building those great habits. And I'm really birthing a new you. It's kind of cocoon time with Saturn here. You know, the butterfly is. Um, oh well, look at this. Good, good. This leads nicely into uh, the card that got drawn for you. So what are we doing? How about we do it now? Jupiter. I drew a card for everybody from Caroline Mace's Archetype Cards. It's an absolutely beautiful deck. I don't use this in my professional readings. When you hire me as a Vedic uh, astrologer, I do not use cards. But I thought I would bring out a deck and draw a card for each sign to give you a little something new, a little something different, a little something fun. So this is quite beautiful actually because the card I drew for you is Angel. 
And I was just talking about the cocoon thing with Saturn and how, you know, what I want to say with Saturn, I want to say that like it's a cocoon thing, you're stuck in there, but you're birthing this beautiful you and you're going to have wings. And I was thinking about wings and then, and then I see the word angel and I thought, wow, yes, I drew the angel card for you guys. That is so perfect. So let's have a look. Let's have a look at what um, message is here for you. Angel, so you have a strong connection to the angelic realm through art, music, or literature. That is beautiful. I feel like I do. I feel like I connect to so many things through art. If you look at my Instagram, it's just full of, I mean, I'm always just throwing together these, like finding beautiful things and posting quotes, and I love art, um, and music especially. Right, Angel provides a channel through which angels' presence is palpably manifested yes oh my goodness I've had many times where um, I have felt something something special nearby but uh, shows a prominent loving and nurturing character fairy godmother godfather helps someone in need anonymously and with no expectation expectation of any return that is beautiful what is your random act of kindness? I love doing stuff like that and I do stuff like that. I um, I could go into it, but I, I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time because we've really got to crack on. Um, Shadow Angel manifests as a claim to be in touch with angelic guidance for the sake of control or ego enhancement or acting innocent to mislead others. Look for a lifelong pattern of inspiring others spiritually. Hi Sagittarius Moon. Sorry about that. The, the camera just kind of, I'll just move the camera a bit as well. hope I'm in focus. The camera just died and I think I was reading the last line. So I'm going to read that out again. Look for a lifelong pattern of inspiring others spiritually or aesthetically. And I'd say that that's definitely something you probably do with ease. Um... You can be incredibly spiritual Sagittarius Moon because you're an incredibly deep thinker. So I feel like whatever's going on here in the stars, you'll be able to go beyond that pretty easily. Uh, and this indication of the angel card is definitely saying that that shouldn't be too hard for you at all. So Sagittarius Moon, I am going to move quickly on to the next one. Thank you so much for joining Sagittarius Moon. Now Capricorn Moon, I'm going to welcome you. Capricorn Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now we're going to quickly go through your faster moving planets. We're going to check in with Saturn because we haven't spoken about Saturn for a while. We haven't checked in with Saturn for a while so we're going to see what's going on there and I've got something really special for you from Jupiter. So let's get stuck in. Uh, you've got Sun-Mercury conjunction moving from the 8th house to the 9th house on September 18. They move together. Um, okay, so we've got an interesting time here for you. Gosh, it's actually all round. It's kind of looking, um, looking a bit tight. Wow, Capricorn Moon. I Yeah, this, this, this is... Uh, a tough time all round so let's go let's go through this bit by bit eighth eighth house to the ninth house sun mercury conjunction sun so and look they move together they move together september 18 uh and it's about 18th it's not precise it's because i just wanted to look at the conjunction that's why i've earmarked it at about september 18th if we have a look at this, the sun is not thrilled to be in the 8th house. There could be hurdles, could be opposition, um, challenges from other people. This is really a time where you need to look after your health. Your relationships could um, lack harmony at this time. If we have a look at Mercury, I'm seeing a nice thing here. This is very good. Uh, Mercury likes being in the 8th house until September 18. So Mercury is giving you good energy. You could have a rise in your social status. Uh, you could be noticed. You could be recognized a bit. Life should be a bit smooth. You could 
be benefiting from gaining wisdom. Uh, this could be really good. Um, but then, I mean, we're looking at after September 18, again, things aren't great here with the sun. You know, you want to be careful at work. Um, spending might be up. Tough times with family, spouse, that kind of thing. Uh, and same goes for Mercury. Finances might be tight. You might experience some issues with your spouse or with your father, that kind of thing. Uh, Venus, I'm having a look there. Venus all month is in the 10th house. And due to the retrograde, she's going to be here. Oh, my apologies. I've just become sniffly all of a sudden. Um, Venus all month, 10th house. And due to the retrograde, She's going to be there till mid-November. So basically, I mean, she moves pretty quickly. She doesn't waste time. But because of retrograde motion, she's kind of hanging around there in the tent. She's going to take a while to go uh, till mid-November. This is a very long transit. Um, and this is not a great transit, Capricorn Moon. Uh, I don't have anything too fantastic to report here with this. Um, you know, you might find that there are some background stresses, some background worries going on. You will want to watch your finances uh, and you'll want to be careful in any of your relationships as well. So, you know, I think when life gets like this, I mean, I'm just looking at your Saturn in 12th till January 2020. Sarisati has begun. You know, I've got a note hang in there. I mean, this is hard. Like, I haven't got any thrilling news to, to give you. Um... But I do. You know what? Because your free will, you can do anything you want. You can go beyond the stars, quite frankly. Uh, and, and we're going to see that with Jupiter. So Saturn, 12th house, January 2020. You know, this is this is really a time to, to handle and master the energies of Saturn. You can master all of these energies, quite frankly, because you're a Capricorn moon as well. Um... This is asking for mastery, discipline, determination, honesty. All Saturn wants is your honesty. Saturn wants self-honesty, honesty with yourself, and self-love. He wants you to understand what self-love means. These are big lessons, you know. Um, I've got a note here, time to learn self-love. It really is. Self-love is not being selfish. Self-love is not being, and believe me, other people around you will make you think that it is. They don't know. Self-love is going within. It's nurturing the self. It's recognizing what true emotions are operating within you. It's giving space for those emotions to just be. Uh, you know, all the things that the inner child has ever wanted, kind of to be listened to, to be understood, to be respected, to be treated fairly. You know, these are all the things that the little inner child wants. And a lot of us didn't get when we were children. So this is the time, really. The time is now to heal and do lots and lots of great work. Um, when it came to Jupiter, I felt inspired to, for every sign, pick an archetype card by Caroline Mace. <laughs> Caroline Mace is a um, New York Times best-selling, amazing, amazing author. Uh, I've read loads of her books. And basically, I just thought it would be quite fun to pick a card for each of you. As a kind of a... I don't do these in readings or anything like that. When I do it, when you hire me professionally as a Vedic astrologer, I just use the sidereal Vedic system and I use Parashara's light and my intuition and that's it. I don't ever use these. But I just thought I'd include this for a little bit of fun. You know what I mean? Just to shake it up, just to do something different, just to be interesting. So I, on behalf of Jupiter, instead of doing a Jupiter roundup, I, I tuned in and I was like, okay, Jupiter, what card do you want me to draw for Capricorn Moon? And this was the card that came. King. You got the King card. I love this. Now, if you are a lady and you get King, I never mind. I always think that's cool. Um, but I always think, well, I shall think of queen. So if you, if you want to think of that, you can. Uh, king, so there could be a message in here for you. There could be something that you need to hear. So let's have a look. King represents 
temporal male power and authority, associated with both benevolence and cruelty. Emperor can arise from common society, like Napoleon, but the king is usually born into it. The shadow king resists criticism, questioning and challenges to his absolute power. Look for a lifelong need to rule and exert control over a kingdom, whether a corporation, community or family. Indeed, and I, I, I even want to put there yourself because in the context of what we've got going on here and if we have a look at this, uh, this is quite perfect really because the king is born into it. What were you born into? There is inner child work to do here. There is some healing um, healing work to do here. What family dynamics were you born into? And, you know, you were probably born into a situation where you had a mum and a dad, a queen and a king. And now as an adult, you're having to do those roles and you're having to let go and let your parents be who they are and you're here to embrace who you are. And you're here to mature into that regal thing, mature adult king or queen that you are, you know. And um, and that you don't need to exert control over a kingdom. It's, it's not about control at all. It's about... Um, It's about being yourself and that's it the, the equal we're all equal and it's the equality of self it's you know um, it's a really interesting archetype a lot to reflect on here look for lifelong need to rule and exert control over a kingdom whether a corporation community or family yeah do you need to exert control or as you mature into that king or queen-like self that you are, you know, maybe it's not about control, maybe it's about equality and just shining and being your true self. And that's linking in with the self-honesty and the self-love. There's a lot here. But I'm really going to have to run into Aquarius Moon. I'm so sorry, Capricorn Moon. I'm going to have to move on because time's ticking and my camera's about to die. So it keeps falling over. Um, it's been a real pleasure, Capricorn Moon. It's been lovely speaking with you. I'm sorry I have to rush today, but we have to move on. So I hope, look, I, I could give you an hour. Do you know what I mean? I could talk for an hour. There's a lot here. I think you're, you're going through one of the, the toughest times in the Zodiac, actually. Um, it is. It's, it's going to be about finding that inner king, finding that inner queen, finding that inner authority, finding that inner power. For you, it's a real job of going within. The kingdom's all inside and um, cultivating that internal power. That's what it's going to be for you. Take care, Capricorn Moon. Uh, we'll speak next time. Aquarius Moon. Aquarius Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now we are going to run straight into your planets, your fast moving planets. We're going to have a look at Saturn. We're going to check in with Saturn and then Jupiter. I've got something really special for you. So Sun and Mercury are conjunct in the seventh house. Uh, September 18th, they move together into the eighth house. They move about on the September 18th. I checked that and uh, it's not precise, but because I'm looking at them together, that's why I just kind of chose that date there about. Thereabouts. Uh, let's have a look. This is, yeah, challenges at work and hurdles. I mean, Mercury is giving you some good energy there uh, after September 18th. But until that point, really, there's going to be some challenges at work. Seniors might find fault in your work, um, delaying achieving targets financial hurdles, these kind of things, opposition. Uh, you want to look after your health, definitely. Um, but after September 18th, Mercury is giving you some love, which is great. Rise in social status. Life should be a bit smoother there, bit of wisdom. But again, it's only Mercury, really. Um, okay, no, we've got Venus helping you out here. Oh, and we've got Saturn helping you. Wow, I'm so happy. 
Okay, no, look at me, I'm changing the tone altogether. This is great. Sorry, I just came out of Capricorn Moon. They're having a tough time, that's why. No, you're having a good time. This is beautiful. Saturn's helping you, I'm happy. Right, you got Venus, right? Venus, all month and ninth house. Um, she's going to retrograde there until mid-November. So this is really good. Uh, great time with your spouse. If not, it could be to do with the sun, but I mean, great time with your spouse. Good time to enjoy some peace of mind for once, Venus-wise. This is good. Success in education. This could be a really spiritual time, really great time to travel, of course, ninth house. You go deep. You could really think deep about, uh, you know, well, aspects of yourself, you know, and uncover all kinds of new things and grow spiritually. It's a wonderful time. Saturn in your 11th house until January 2020. Okay, this is beautiful. This is a platform building time. You are one of the lucky people in the zodiac. There are three people, so people who are getting Saturn in the third, Saturn in the sixth, Saturn in the eleventh. You've got Saturn in the eleventh. Hooray! I'm sure I've spoken about this before with you, but it's always good to recap, especially when it's good news like this. So this is a platform building time. Now is the time to achieve lots. Now is the time to go for opportunities, to build wealth, to buy property, to do what you can. Really do what you can to bolster your life and grow. I call it a, have I said this, a platform building time? If I haven't said it, this is a platform building time. You, you want to build that next step up in life. Um, Saturn should help you to do that, to achieve that. Because your Saturday South is going to start uh, after Jan 2020. So you really want to get ready for that. You want to have... A lot of things in order and to be feeling uh, as comfortable as possible so now's a really good time to work hard and achieve what you can okay so when it comes to Jupiter I was going to do my usual Jupiter roundup but then I got inspired I looked up the Caroline Mace cards the archetype cards and I drew a card for each sign on behalf of Jupiter so I tuned into Aquarius moon I was like Jupiter what message do you want to give and we've got here the Samaritan. So this is interesting. Well, you are a bit of a Samaritan anyway. You're a humanitarian. Okay, Samaritan. So I'm just going to read this out. So that way you've got a bit of a reading from me and a bit of a reading from New York Times bestselling Caroline Mace. And by the way, I don't use these cards in my readings. When you hire me professionally, I only use the sidereal Vedic astrology system and my intuition I don't use these but I just thought I'd throw this in for a bit of fun just to spice up the reading okay Samaritan closely related to the martyr archetype Samaritans make sacrifices for those they might be least inclined to serve wow as in the gospel parable of the good Samaritan interesting shadow Samaritan helps one person or group to the detriment of another his family or society. Apologies, Aquarius Moon, the camera just cut out. The camera keeps cutting out. I really do need to get a new camera. I'm definitely saving up for one of those. Right, so I think Samar Samaritan, um, closely related to the martyr, Samaritans make sacrifices for those they might be least inclined to serve, um, which, anyway, let's not take every word of this verbatim. Don't worry, I'll, I'll wrap this up in, in the context of your reading. Um, Shadow Samaritan helps one person or group to the detriment of another, his family or society, implying a kind of self-importance that says that others must adhere to his choice of who is most deserving. It says here, look for a continuing pattern of going out of your way to support others with no regard for whether they are family, strangers or even enemies. That is really interesting. I do think archetypally the Samaritan matches you perfectly, Aquarius Moon. Uh, I was really amazed. When I, when I drew all of these, you know, I was just so amazed at how appropriate they were for each sign. Uh, and I suppose this is the first time me drawing these per sign. So it's pretty amazing to get kind of um, an archetypal thing that, that matches the overall overarching sign so Aquarius I mean you guys are the natural humanitarians um, definitely so Samaritan humanitarian it, it's a very similar sort of a thing what does it say on the actual card it says um, refines your light attribute refines your capacity to help those 
you would prefer to ignore. Wow, that is harsh a bit, isn't it? I mean, I imagine the light attribute would be refines your capacity to help people in need. How about that? Um, perhaps I need to do some research on this uh, Good Samaritan parable. Um, shadow attribute, exacting appreciation and recognition for the help you offer. Yeah, obviously. So really interesting things to reflect on there. Um, perhaps it's linking in with your platform building time. You've got this good Venus thing going on here. I mean, Venus in the ninth, sure, and Saturn there. And I mean, maybe, uh, maybe you are doing something like, um, you know, I don't know, building a school or, or doing building some kind of charitable organization or something wonderful like that. Wonderful. That's fantastic. Um, might this card might just be asking you to to think quite deeply um, about what it is you're doing and um, you know who, whose needs are you fulfilling it's it's really interesting really interesting I mean the other archetypes yeah I'm just kind of looking at rescuer this matches in with the rescuer as well so you might want to study the rescuer archetype too but I'm going to crack on with Pisces moon because I have to hurry on I have to get into the next one because I'm really running out of time. My day is fast evaporating. So Aquarius Moon, it has been a delight to talk to you and I'm now going to move into Pisces Moon. Pisces Moon, Pisces Moon, welcome. Welcome to your mini reading. Now I'm going to go very quickly through your fast moving planets. We're going to do a Saturn check-in and then I've got something special lined up for you for Jupiter this month. So Sun Mercury conjunction in the sixth house, September 18 or thereabouts, they move together into the seventh house. So, what's happening there? Is this good? Um, yes, it is. It's good for a time. Venus is good, thankfully. Saturn has you working a bit hard. Okay, so let's go, let's take this one by one. Sun, uh, relief in health I mean your son son is happy to be in six this is a good placement uh hopefully you know your enemies are weaker and I know that's a bit of a strange term it's kind of ancient Vedic language uh translated into English there I mean yeah so son is able to to overcome obstacles uh you know success in litigation things like that um, relief in health, your health should be good. So this is really good. Mercury, Mercury up until that September 18 point is also good. Um, success, your business should grow. You know, um, you might not want to stick around if there are arguments. That's fair enough. Who wants to stick around when there's an argument? Uh, September 18 onwards, sun is, is going into a period where there are challenges so coming out of a period where it's been good and then going into a, a more challenging time challenges at work um, delay in achieving targets that sort of thing uh, mercury seniors finding fault in your work possibly after september 18 um, you might be my apologies pisces moon the camera just cut out and i've tried two or three times to record this and the camera has dropped dead each time so i have a severe problem i'm going to really race through your reading um, this time i don't even know where we got to i think we probably got to venus did we get to mercury i think we got to mercury i was probably talking about how seniors might find fault with your work this is basically sun mercury conjunction they move September 18th, they're coming into the seventh house and they're not, neither are particularly thrilled to be there uh, out of Sun and Mercury, both of them are a bit unhappy. Um, and by unhappy I just mean they're not the most comfortable there but it doesn't mean you can't yield good results. Um, you know, I, I always believe anything's possible. <laughs> um, let's hop into Venus and then we're quickly going to go into Saturn and then we're going to go into something special that I've got lined up for you. So I've got my fingers crossed that the camera doesn't collapse. Please don't die. Uh, right, Venus all month is in the eighth house um, due to the retrograde. It's going to be there until mid-November. 
is this a good thing or is this not a good thing? Do you know what? I'm going to say this is a good thing. Um, it should be quite comfortable. You should have wealth, uh, money coming in, all that kind of thing. Uh, this is a good time to have with your partner. If you're single, get out and mingle. Um, good time to study. Good time to do property deals. It's a good time. Venus is having a good time in the 8th. And that's brilliant because it's a nice long transit. Good to have her there um, until mid-November. So that's quite good. Saturn in the 10th house until January 2020. Saturn, you know, you'd think Saturn would like being in the 10th house, but he doesn't really. Uh, you know, he's... Um, I think he's probably frustrated here. There could be issues at work. Uh, you know, it's the kind of placement you want to avoid arguments at work. Expenses may be higher. This is something you want to keep an eye on. And you might be feeling burdened with responsibilities. Um, this is also because of the aspect uh, under the fourth house. You might, I mean, you will want to um, take care uh, of your mother's health quite possibly. I actually do know someone with this um, placement and yeah my fingers are crossed that her mother's okay because her mother has definitely gone through some complications um, health-wise. So uh, I feel for you Pisces Moon if, if you're going through any of that. Um, Jupiter, I didn't do an overview. What I did do was I drew a card from the Caroline Mace Archetypes cards and you are very lucky because you got the student. Oh. I remembered getting the student card uh, many years ago on Bondi Beach. That's a very good story and I might tell it to you one day, but I won't do that now because the camera might collapse and I want you to get your message. So there might be some divine message in here for you uh, from Jupiter. By the way, I don't um, refer to tarot cards or, or these kind of archetype cards in my readings. When I do a reading for you professionally, I only look at um, the sidereal Vedic astrology system and my own intuition, of course. Okay, so Pisces Moon, student, disciple, devotee, apprentice. Uh -huh. uh, Aha. Suggests, suggests not an absence of mastery but rather a continual pursuit of intellectual development I mean that's just glorious I, do you know this is this is how I see my entire life I, I, I think I'm going to be a student every single day till I die like I think that's what keeps us young you know um, I love learning new things and that's all the people who Richard Branson Martha Stewart like all the top people um, who've really made it that's what they say that they keep learning every single day and that's really important to them uh, I know Martha Stewart as a success. Look, she's a role model for me. Okay, <laughs> um, some people think what, but like I have so many role models that it's unbelievable. You see, because I'm a student, I'm an eternal student, so of course I have lots of role models and people that I learn from. Uh, maybe this is inspiration for you, Pisces Moon. Maybe you're meant to accumulate some more. Um, people to be inspired by look at that student has found a source of teaching such as a guru or spiritual master who becomes the instructor and spiritual guide sure and role models let's not forget role models you know i've got lots of spiritual teachers i was just watching byron katie earlier today um you know i've got heaps of spiritual teachers you bet but like role models they're important too who inspires you you know who, who whose life story do you hear and you just go wow that person's strong I have loads of those. Um, shadow student. Shadow student usually manifests in tandem with the shadow teacher or mentor, avidly learning all the tools of the wrong trade or misusing the knowledge learned. May never move beyond the student role to develop an independent inner wisdom. That's really interesting, that you may never move beyond the student role. I mean, yeah, I, I kind of get that, actually. I suppose that would be like me being a student forever and not daring to do something like a YouTube channel. So I am making progress uh, in that way because I, I definitely want to share um, all the wisdom I've acquired over, over the years. But that's something for you to be thinking about. You would have acquired a huge amount of wisdom. I know it. You're a Pisces moon. Of course, you've got loads. You have got loads to give humanity. You're just pulling from beyond the veil. So... Uh, please, 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 please share with us what you what you receive. I think it's fine to always be forever a student till your last day, 
as long as at some point you do share along the way, you do teach along the way, or you do mentor, you do guide uh, as well. You know, it's like give and take, right? It's both. Look for a pattern of constant learning, openness to new information as an essential part of your well-being. How beautiful. Absolutely. I really do think that that's really important. I actually want to do some videos in that, in that regard about looking at creativity and looking at, yeah, creativity and, and taking in information and giving and, and you know, because creativity... Um, Creativity has this thing of, you know, when, when you get this flood of ideas come through, but we've, we've got this linear time frame and you can only give one at a time. You know, you have things like cameras breaking down that distract you <laughs> as they distracted me. I've tried three times. It hasn't died yet. Look, I better wrap up before it does completely collapse. Um, Pisces Moon, I can see that you've got a bit of a mixed bag here. Uh, things to do with Saturn might be casting a bit of heavy energy it might just be a little bit tough at this time um, but please know that you've got everything within you to pull through you've got your glorious free will which you can use to manifest anything you want at any given point of time and if you would like to have a reading please get in touch with me and I would love to see what's going on in your chart and see how I can help you so I'm going to wrap this up before the camera does it for me Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you next time.